Friday to you. My name is Raymond Cedillo. I am a master nutrition therapist. I work for the Mental Health Center of Denver at To Succeed in Education. Welcome to this 20 minute overview entitled The Immune System and Nutrition. Brought to you by Common Sense Nutrition, Nature's Way to Wellness. This COVID-19 virus has a lot of people thinking about their immune system. They want to know if there's anything they can do to make it stronger and work more efficiently. They want to know if foods or supplements are involved, and if so, what foods and what supplements. I will try to answer some of those questions for you during the question and answer period after the video. This video is broken into three segments. The first segment is going to concentrate on the what. What is the immune system? What does it do and how does it do it? And what body parts, what organs, what systems are involved in the immune system? The second segment of this video is going to look at common sense guidelines, things that we can do to keep our immune system healthy. And then the third segment will concentrate on nutrition. I'm going to use my plate to help illustrate the food groups that we need to eat, and we'll talk about those nutrients behind those food groups. I'm going to give a lesson on the macronutrients and talk about proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So that will be the third segment. So why don't we get started and let's go to the first segment and I will meet you there in just a second. Hi, welcome back for this quick overview of the immune system. I hope you don't mind if I have a cup of coffee while I talk to you. I'll try to explain to you what it is very quickly, what it does and how it does it. Well, what is the immune system? Well, it's our body's natural defense system. And what is it defending us from? It's defending us from pathogens. And, and what are pathogens? Well, pathogens are bacteria, viruses, toxic microbes, fungi, you know, just to name a few. Um, we have three immune systems in a lifetime. We're born with what they call innate immunity. The innate immunity is the default immunity that we're born with. And the major player there would be the skin. The skin protects us up to the age of you know, 10 years old um, from most pathogens in the environment. And then at that time, as we mature, our bodies mature, our immune system uh, matures after the age of 10. Then we have what's called the adaptive immune system. It adapts. It adapts to the environment around us. So as we get older and we go out into life and we travel and we live different places and we encounter different germs and bacteria and the adaptive immune system protects us and that's what keeps us alive. And then there's what they call the passive immune system. Uh, it's usually tempered. Uh, it's usually a temporary and a borrowed immune system. For example, uh, a mom and her breast milk is an example of a passive immunity. The mother can pass on through her milk to the child, to the baby, any immunities that she may have developed. That mother might have had a disease and gotten well and uh, created antibodies for it. And the baby is the beneficiary of that. Another example would be vaccines. Some vaccines are um, done yearly, like the pneumonia vaccine or hepatitis type B, and some are done maybe once in a lifetime, like chickenpox vaccine. Um, so what body parts are involved? I always think of the lungs and the heart and the kidneys and the liver, and once again, the skin. And what systems does it traverse? Well, the immune system um, relies on the circulatory system and it relies on the lymphatic system. But oftentimes we forget about our first line of defense. We take it for granted because these are uh, parts of the body and uh, functions of the body that are just so basic. For example, the digestive system. You know, when we eat food and it goes down the esophagus into the stomach and starts its digestive journey, well, there are uh, there's mucous membrane along the esophagus that has the ability to kill off pathogens. And if those pathogens aren't killed off going down the esophagus, once they enter the stomach environment with all the acid in there, 
uh, those microbes won't survive. And then I think about the, the lungs, the uh, mucous membrane that lines the lungs, works with those little fine hairs called cilia that uh, get pathogens moving upward through the lungs in the form of phlegm and we spit it out, blah, blah, blah. And then we have tears and we have saliva. Um, the second line of uh, defense would be the, the T cells and the B cells and they are types of white blood cells. Uh, white blood cells come in a variety. You know, you have your phagocytes and you have your lymphocytes. And that's our second line of defense uh, as part of the immune system. So how does all of this work? Well, these B cells and T cells have a very important role. The B cell is the intelligence that goes out to find pathogens, knows when a pathogen has entered the body, recognizes that pathogen as an invader, and finds out everything it can about that pathogen, and then relays that over to the T cells that seek out those pathogens and destroy them. So in a nutshell, the way the immune system works, a pathogen enters the body, the B cells recognize that there's an invader, the B cells does its uh, intelligence work, finds out everything it can about that pathogen, uh, recognizes it as an antigen, and relays that information to the T cells that go out and destroy it, and record it, put it in the body's memory, so you're not going to get that uh, illness or virus or, or be susceptible to that bacteria again, and then creates um, antibodies. So that's it in a nutshell. Seek and destroy, record the event, and make sure it doesn't happen again. Now we're going to talk about the uh, Harvard Medical Journal's recommendations to things we can do to have a healthy lifestyle, will promote a, a healthy immune system. So if you would follow me, I'm going to take you to a different location, one that I enjoy, and um, I'll see you in a few minutes. Hi, so welcome to the part of the video where we talk about common sense things that we can do to keep our immune system healthy. This is all public domain. There's nothing surprising about this information. I'm taking some of the information from the Harvard School of Medicine journal just for credibility's sake, but I really didn't have to. The information's out there. So let's talk about some of these things. Sleep hygiene. Getting good healthy sleep is very important for the immune system. How many hours that is? Well, it depends on the individual. Some people can buy with six hours of sleep at night. Some people need a little bit more. Exercise, keep your body active. Find exercise that you can do that is sustainable through life. If you don't like lifting weights, you shouldn't be lifting weights. If you don't like to run, don't run. Keep your weight balanced. Try not to get overweight because just five pounds of uh, extra weight on your body can cause metabolic changes in your body that can lead to some of the metabolic syndrome. If you smoke, stop. I told you earlier that the lungs are very important when it comes to our immune system. We need our lungs to be able to help us when pathogens enter the lungs. If you drink, drink to moderation. If you drink too much alcohol for too long in a lifetime, it's very detrimental to you. And try to de-stress. Stress is one of the main killers in our society. It's hard to control because the minute we roll out of bed, we are faced with stressors. There's types of stress that are physical, mental, emotional, and the more stress you have in your life, the more vulnerable you are to lowering your immune system. Those are the common sense type things that you can do. Um, nothing special about them, just really common sense information that aligns with common sense nutrition. So I will see you in a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna be at the uh, building and I'll give you a lesson on the foods that we should be eating. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.